black thing go from left to right, and I thought, I'm going to die out here. No one's ever going to know. I couldn't believe what my eyeballs were showing me. I'll never forget how evil the eyes were. It was horrible. I mean, I've never seen nothing that evil. It ran towards me at a, at a rate that I, I, I can't even explain. Turned and stared at me. And this look of, I just want to kill you. I want to say it was human, but it wasn't. He was, he, was, he was yelling at me to grab a gun, grab a gun. I was like, for what? He said, just grab a gun. And there's footprints all the way to the door of my house. It had went inside my garage all the way to the door. 911, what are you reporting? Jesus Christ, you better... Sir? Zio! Hello? Get somebody out here. What's going on now, sir? That son of a bitch is about six foot nine, I don't know. Do you see him now, sir? Yes, I'm looking right at him. Uh-oh. You're listening to Sasquatch Chronicles. Check us out online at sasquatchchronicles.com. If you've had an encounter, email me. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thanks for being here tonight. Got a great show planned for you tonight. Going to be talking to uh, Sean who comes to us from Kansas. And uh, he had a very interesting encounter when he was a little kid. Uh, he had actually seen two of these creatures. Uh, but he describes finding footprints and a lot of strange things that went on and around the property when he was a little boy. Uh, so he'll be talking about some of that tonight. Then I'll also be talking to Jeff. And Jeff is actually just across the Columbia River from me um, over on the Oregon side. And he'll be sharing some uh, experiences he had up at Mount Hood. Should be a great show tonight. If you've had an encounter and you'd like to be on the show, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. If you get a chance, please check out sasquatchchronicles.com. You can become a member, get additional shows. A lot of cool things on the site. Uh, Friday night, how's everyone doing tonight? Uh, Let's jump into it. Sean, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for being here. Hey, thank you for inviting me, Wes. Yeah, no, I appreciate you being here, Sean. And I know uh, your encounters took place in Kansas, and uh, a lot of strange things that happened in the beginning. Uh, if and, and walking up into your actual encounter, if you would, would you kind of start from the beginning? What was kind of the one of the first things you noticed that you experienced prior to actually seeing it? Well, the the very first thing that I I would notice. Um, was there would be my my bedroom was above uh the driveway so above the garage basically and there was uh when you walk out the front door to the right and you look over the rail we had trash cans there and i would always hear i not always but sometimes i would hear you know something going through our trash can and I always thought it was raccoons or something because every time I looked out there or would open the door, I would never see anything out there. From there, uh, during the summer, I'd come outside. You know, I'm a, I'm a only child, so I am basically had to entertain myself. And so um, I came outside and um, I looked at the flower bed because we had just planted some flowers so I was excited about you know I helped my mom plant some flowers I wanted to see if they had started coming up when I went and looked in the flower bed I saw like footprints in the flower bed and I was like who's like why would somebody walk around here with no shoes on and walking you know are somebody is somebody trying to look in our window at night or what's going on and you're a young kid at this time you're what about 12 years old Yes, sir. And live at 12 years old. Just you and your mom? Just me and my mom. And um, I would have to say, let me rewind just a little bit. The the previous winter, I believe, uh, there was a snow day, and my friend and I were playing, uh, you know, having a snowball fight. We went around his property, you know, throwing snowballs at each other. 
And when we got around to the back side of his house where his gate was, we entered the backyard. And once we entered the backyard, we saw footprints going through the back of his backyard in the snow. Uh, we followed the footprints until we got to uh, the edge of the fence and we looked at them and there was a footprint on one side of the uh, fence and a footprint on the other side of the fence. So it basically walked over the fence in stride, I guess. I, I realize you're like 12 at the time, but were they large footprints? Did they seem like they could be human in size? Do you remember? Uh, Obviously, humans don't walk over look, fences, but... Well, it was just bizarre because it was like it was snow on the ground. I mean, it, it was a snow day, so this, I would say that the snow that we were out there playing in was probably maybe two feet, two feet deep. I got you. And, and so it was just odd to me and him. His, his name was David. And, you know, we looked at it and looked at each other and like, who would be walking around? barefooted in the snow and the size of the prince uh at the time i think i might have been wearing a, a seven or eight in shoe size we could i could put mm. both of my feet together and my foot both of my feet together were wasn't as big as this one foot or you know so it was just bizarre after that i i, I recall being sick on um, the couch and the, the way that our front door was made, we had a little glass uh, square glass piece in the front door that was, I guess, the, about the average adult's height or whatever. And uh, I recall seeing a face. And, you know, when I looked up there, I saw a face going past the window. I told my mother that I saw a face in the window and she didn't believe me. And uh, I guess that that's those were the things leading up to I guess me actually seeing it because I didn't when I saw the face in the window I didn't know if I really saw a face or I saw the uh, trees in the front yard moving to create some type of distorted image or something that I was seeing you know I got gotcha. you and so this is going on you're finding footprints there's obviously some something around the home. Um, are we leading up to when you, you went through a football? Yes, I, I had, um, was outside at night and I was, you know, how you kind of throw football up and you practice catching it by yourself or whatever. Yeah. So I was launching the ball up in the air and, uh, was catching it and the, I was in the street and to my left, there was a driveway and then they had like a, I wouldn't say it was a full garage. It was just big enough for them to put their car in it, not any lawn tools or lawnmower or anything. And um, they had a large uh, row of hedge bushes or some something like that by the garage that were over, I know they had to be over five feet tall because they were taller than me. And when I was throwing the ball, I noticed because there was, there was a light on the garage and I noticed something about, I guess you would say my knee level at the time peering at me from behind this bush. And when I, I noticed it, it ducked back really quickly. And so I was like, I wonder, well, I wonder if that's one of the kids in the neighborhood trying to play a prank on me or trying to do something. And so I just kept throwing the ball and I kept my eyes, like my peripheral vision kind of facing towards that way and kept throwing the ball. And then I noticed that it would kind of peek like just enough of his head out where maybe one eye would be where they could see what I was doing. And then if it looked, if, if it thought that I was looking in that direction, it would duck back really quickly. And this went on for maybe about five minutes or so. At that point, I got frustrated, and I thought to myself, well, this must be one of the kids in the neighborhood. So I threw the football in that direction, and I was a pretty accurate throw. And I didn't 
I wasn't trying to hit 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 it or hit I thought what was a child uh, and it hit near the location where it was and I screamed I see you after after I did that I stood there and I looked for a while expecting somebody to come from around the bush ha ha man we got you or whatever that never happened and after that I looked for a little bit longer and I started getting a really strange vibe and I, I said let me go in the house I'm gonna take myself in the house because I, I really I don't know what this this uh, feeling is but I went in the house and so later that night I uh, I felt like you know by seeing the footprints and all that other stuff that I had seen maybe possibly that's what it was and so I slept close to the window, which was a large uh, window in my room, and the bottom of the window almost came down to the floor. There was probably about a gap of maybe five to ten inches before you know it it before the floor, I guess. And so I slept in that little gap and fell asleep, and then I woke up. I thought I heard like someone talking or something. And then I noticed like these green, greenish, yellowish, uh, I don't know if it was reflections. I couldn't really say it was an orb or anything, but it looked like, you know, how you, you used to have, get those, uh, uh stickers that, that were, uh, um, they're like silver stickers, but then when you move them in the light, they turn all different kind of colors. Right. Yeah. So I thought, you know, maybe that might be something shining off of the neighbor's truck because we lived in duplex. So, like, maybe something is shining off his truck. I didn't really get up to look. Shortly after that, I kind of peered over to my left and I saw uh, it walking through, walking up to the window. And I put my head down. I was like, oh, man, what? what is that? And, you know, then I looked up again by that time and it, it had gotten <laughs> to the, on the right side of the window and walked kind of underneath the window, crouched a little bit. And when I looked down, which would have probably been maybe about a foot or so away from where I was looking, we made eye contact and the way that I, I've, the eyes were shifting like it was analyzing me and really trying to, to, to something, I don't know, but the look on its face, I would have to describe as like, if you've ever seen uh, just anybody that's really angry and they scrunch their brows up really like I'm going to get you yeah. that, that type, that type of a look. And when it did that, I backed up from the window a little bit, but I was still on the left side of the window looking looking at it. And it, then it stood, I guess, all the way up, which it was damn near in my face at that point. And it proceeded to have these little facial gestures that it was doing. Uh, I'm not going to say that it was smiling or something, but it did kind of turn its body uh, a little bit and then it kind of leaned, leaned his head back a little bit and kind of cracked his mouth open. At that point, I saw what I, what I thought I saw was uh, canine teeth. They weren't like big like a dog's teeth, but kind of smaller, but they were pointed. And when it did that, I took off and... Uh, you know, went to my mother's room and started shaking her. Shortly after that, I only I want to say maybe even thirty seconds. They were it. I don't know if it was several of them. I believe at at this point, I believe there might have been some that were in trees, and that's why I saw uh, the greenish yellow stuff on my light. It might have been eye reflection that was because uh, there was a floodlight in my neighbor's yard. And um, anyway, going back to being in my mother's room, it wasn't even 30 seconds or more 
before uh, I had uh, I, I had heard them walking around the back of the house, and I could actually feel the steps through the wall while I was trying to wake my mother up, telling them, tell her to. I said the first thing I said to her was, uh, "There's something out there," and she said, uh, "Well, you know, don't. There's nothing out there. Don't worry about it." Uh, I said, no, there's something out there. You need to call the police. Please call the police. Please, please call the police. And I wouldn't leave a room. And while I was sitting there begging her, I kept hearing them. It's like, it was almost like you could hear them pacing back and forth uh, in front of her window. And then to t- to kind of tie in some something else that, that I thought about after the fact, which is the ne- the next door neighbors had uh, two large Doberman pinchers. One of them was like one of the red, sandy, red nose type ones. And one of them was uh, regular with the regular black and brown markings. They had a fence that was set up <clears throat> that wasn't an actual like chain link fence, but like one of the kinds you can just throw up temporarily to, you know, maybe like a garden fence or something. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, okay, so one one um, one day I was out there cutting the grass, and the woman uh, screamed over at me that I need to stop messing with her dogs. I was terrified of those dogs. I would never. I told her I was scared. I'm not coming over there to fool with your dogs. So I think that they were messing with her dogs at night as well. But back to my mother called the police. The police came. There was nothing around there. They, you know, they came in and, and talked to my mother and said, "There's nothing out there." And I'm looking at them like, "Like, are you serious?" Yeah, um, and, and it's kind of fascinating too at this point because, and one detail I'll fill in for the audience is your mom was actually in a major injury. I mean, she had like a neck brace and probably right. was pretty heavily sedated at this point because she was in so much pain. Right, she was sedated. She used to uh, actually at, at one point in time. She, my mother was a school teacher, and uh, at one point in time, she took off uh, a good part of the school year because she had been in multiple accidents, and you know was going through the the therapy and you know how the medical uh, field is. They want to, they don't, they throw. Uh, things to kind of patch you up and not really cure you. So they threw some medication her way and, you know, she was sedated, like I said, but I still woke her, woke her up. And what's funny about that whole thing is all my life, I've never had to call the police for anything at, at one of my residences as a child. We've never called the police. Nothing has ever happened. And, um, you know, like I said, the police came. They said what they said. Um, but before the police came, I went back into my room and I peeked out the window. And when I did that, I heard a large growl. And then I saw a limb in the front and there in the neighbor's front yard get knocked off. I didn't actually see him knock it off because he was they were standing in the shadows at this point and they knocked off the branch and growled and the growl that I heard I'll never forget that I'll never ever forget it and the howls that I used to hear when I was getting ready for football practice around four or five o'clock in the morning I would come outside and there would be these weird howls. And this was before my incident even happened. I would hear these howls. And I guess uh, the way I can describe the howls would be um, it wasn't like whooping at any point. It was like almost like a long siren type howl that kind of gradually changed pitch over time. It didn't really modulate. Like the Ohio Howl? I didn't mean to cut you off. Kind of like the Ohio Howl? I've heard you play that before, and um, I do believe that it sounds exactly like that. 
you you know you know the point where in in the Ohio how where it it, it seems like it's reverbing. Right. Yeah. It's kind of going that's up and I, down. That's that's what I I, I mean I, I heard it like doing it, but it was like it was stopped, but the the trail of it was continue continuing, and then it would start back up and add more to it if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does make sense. And and people have to realize, too, this is like 1970s, 80s. And so there wasn't a ton of information on these things. I want to go back to a couple things um, Mm -hmm. along with the description of it. But before we get into that, um, you had mentioned it was doing facial expression expressions with you. And I'm really fascinated by this because I've talked to probably half a dozen kids that have seen this at their window. And, you know, you can't you got to be careful how many questions you ask a kid because it starts to feel like an interrogation. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I'm curious, what what do you think it was doing? Because I've heard all these kids say this, you know, the, the facial expressions change. But what do you think it was trying to do? It was trying to intimidate. I mean, just I'm not going to say from my from my standpoint as an adult right now, I believe that it was trying to intimidate me because – I threw something at one of its members or a, a child member that they had or whatever, because like, like I said, in the front yard, when I first saw footprints, I saw three sets of footprints. There was one that was probably about 18 inches long. There was one that was probably around my foot size. And then there was one that was in between those sizes. And so I believe that it was trying to intimidate me. Now the actual face, facial expressions that it made, uh, like I said, the eyes were uh, when I first saw it up underneath the window. Kind of, it was the eyes were shifting uh, really quickly, like it was scanning me, and uh, then it moved over to the left of the window. And that's when it kind of turned, and I could see its whole head at that point, its face. I uh, looked at the eyes. Uh, the eyes, to me, didn't have uh, – it was like uh, – you know how we have the, the white in our eye? I didn't see a lot of white mm-hmm. in the eye. And um, the nose, from what I remember – it was very much like a a gorilla's nose. Um, It was large and spread out and kind of hooked at the, you know, the ends of the nose. Um, At that point, it kind of turned its head a little bit or its body and head a little bit and proceeded to lean back and show me his, his, his mouth. He like, kind of opened his mouth and his looked on his face. Have you ever seen like somebody trying to sneak up on somebody and they, they, they get close to him and the person sees them and they try to act slick, like they're not going to do nothing. And then they actually grab you real quick. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's what I, that's what I felt was getting ready to go on. And that's why I ran away from the window. It showed me its teeth. And uh, the mouth was really large. Uh, I've never seen anything like that. I mean, uh, it's it's um, it's it, it's crazy. Yeah, it is. And and their mouths are huge. You know, when they when they come in, um, how would you compare its look different from like a gorilla? I think the head is way larger than the gorilla's head. Um, the pigment on its skin, the one that that was in the window, actually, when I first saw it walking close uh, uh, up the driveway, we didn't have a long driveway, so it probably took maybe two, three steps, and it was right up on the window. When I first saw it, I really thought that I was looking at Chewbacca almost, but then when I really saw its face in the window, the 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 I thought I was looking at just a giant gorilla. Like, this is crazy because, you know, you don't expect to see something like that. I'm living in the suburbs at the time. The way that the neighborhood was, it was like, uh, 
we were on the, I, I feel like we were on the edge of the town. So if you drove probably 10 minutes in, you know, a certain direction, you would be, you know, heading out of town. It really is fascinating because, you know, a lot of things I hear these, these kids say too, uh, when they get up and they go to their, their parents' room, um, these things will run around the house and follow them, which is odd to me. Um, but did you ever see the creature again after this incident? I did not. I, I think really, to be honest with you, shortly after that, it, I think it affected me so much that it affected my behavior with, with, with my mother. And I went to live with my uncle in Denver. And the when I got off the plane in Denver, first thing my uncle does is he takes, he decides he wants to go cut wood for uh, the fireplace. And we drive up to the mountains and guess who's having a panic attack? <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. And so you left shortly after this incident. I stopped. I started acting out. And, I mean, as a child, you don't really know how to take that, seeing something like that. Uh, you know, it, it affected my, my sleeping pattern for a while. I wasn't able to sleep at night. And then when I was able to sleep at night, I would have very vivid dreams of it busting in the house and, you know, possibly doing something to me. Now, what's interesting, I think, about uh, uh, the next morning, I don't know if I put that in, in the email that I sent you, when I my mother w was teaching at a different school, so she would get up and get me prepared in the morning, and then my school was like maybe two blocks away. So she had left already. I was going downstairs to the uh, basement to get clothes, and uh, when I did that, I don't. When I turned the first flight of steps to go down to the second flight, I heard grunting, and I immediately took off. So I don't know if they were in the bottom part of the basement or they were sitting on the back side of the house at the, at this window. Uh, which would have been, we didn't have anybody that li lived directly behind us. There was a church, you know, with a large gravel driveway behind the house. But uh, I took off and I beat on the neighbor's door and told him there was something in our house. And he went over and looked and there was nothing in the house. But, you know, after that, I walked to school and was very aware of my surroundings. And when I got out of school, I really didn't want to have to come back home because I didn't know, you know, if that's something that I'm going to see in the daytime or the, do they just come out at night? Because at that point, I mean, I had, you know, seen the in search of stuff back in the seventies with Leonard Nimoy and, um, you know, they didn't really have, the only thing they had was the Patty film at the time. And what I saw, it wasn't as bulky as Patty, but it was it was really tall and kind of um, very wide at the shoulders. But it didn't seem to be as bulky as as Patty was. I I didn't, I didn't get to see a, a full body shot. I saw from the first moment I saw it. I probably saw from uh, the torso up to its head. Yeah, I worry about stuff like this, Sean, because I, I get, yeah, I, I'm telling you, I've talked to a lot of little kids. Um, probably some of the best witnesses I've ever talked to were little kids. Um, and there's this weird fascination these creatures have with, with kids and with women. Um, do you think that it meant you harm, or do you think it was more of curiosity? I think at that point it meant me harm. It was, it was, I mean, by listening to uh, your show, it's kind of educated me on some of the behaviors that I've heard other people had experiences with. And by me throwing something at them, I think was taken as a sign of aggression on my part. And so they were coming to threaten me, or if they could have got me at that point, they would have gotten me, I believe. If I'd have been dumb enough to go outside, I probably you probably wouldn't be talking to me. 
Do you think that they'd been watching you for a while? I mean, obviously you were finding prints and... I, I do believe that... I'm sorry to cut you off. I do believe that they have been watching me for a while because I always felt watched in the house. The way that my mother had these, these uh, curtains in the kitchen and the bottom part of the curtain uh, right in front of the, the uh, sink, you know, it, it covered the window, but then there was like, I don't know what this piece is. It's like a little overhang piece that has material on it, but there was a gap in between the the top part of the window and then where the actual curtain starts. And so when I be would be sitting there or standing there washing dishes, I would always feel like I was being looked at. And it would give me really spooky, you know, just a really odd feeling. One day I went went outside to my mother had bought bought a hibachi grill for you know for us to cook on that summer, and I'd opened up the back door to um, get ready to cook something, and I noticed like the tree in the backyard just started shaking really hard. There was nothing by the tree shaking it. So I thought something had ran up in the tree, but the way that it was shaking, it was too heavy for like a, a, a cat or a possum or some raccoons or some little type of animal like that. It was, I mean, the tree was really shaking hard. So I, at that point I had went in the house to try to find a, a, a flashlight and I went back out there and looked and there was nothing in the tree in the tree at that point. So. I do believe that I do believe that they were watching me for a while. They could have been watching my mother too as well. I know uh yesterday when we talked I mentioned that, you know, race and I do believe, you know, what you said that they don't see race. But I do believe that they do see difference. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense, yeah. So if I'm walking around and I'm Basically, I was the only, uh, I think there might have been three black kids in my, um, in my class, in my junior, in my, um, not junior high, but elementary school. And yeah, so I, I think, I think they were curious about what they saw. And when I threw that ball, that just kind of took the curiosity away and said, oh, we have to, we have to send somebody out there to, uh, to discipline this person because they can't throw things at us. We only get to throw at them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I hear you. I wanted to ask you too, when you saw the face looking at you, I realize you're seeing it from a distance and it's half of it's hidden by a bush. Do you think it was the same creature that came up to your window that night or do you think it was a different one? I know it was a different one because the head was not big. And a matter of fact, I can describe the head to you. Have you ever seen the, uh, uh, there's a, a, a video out on YouTube about, uh, some guys in a, in a, uh, tent and they leave their tent kind of cracked open. And I guess they walked away for a while. And, uh, there's a, a, a one of them walks past the tent and, I don't know if that was night vision that they had on the camera or whatever, but you see the shape of the head and you can kind of see the ears kind of having a, a point to them or something. But the way, the way I can describe the head was it was otherworldly as far as looking at it at that point at, at the head was kind of a conical shape, but it was more pointed than the one that I saw in my window. And I could see the ears a lot better on this one. And matter of fact, the way I could really describe it is I thought I was looking at like some kind of fairy or something peeking at me from behind the bushes. It was really, uh, really, really strange. I could see where it was kind of like tilting its head like it was it was like analyzing what I was doing. And then, like I said, when it saw me, look in that direction it peeked back back behind the bush and then it kept nudging it, itself out just a little bit then it would duck back and it did that like i said maybe about five three three between three to five minutes and at that point that's when i threw the ball at it and i was like i'll i'll 
had enough and I see you. Then I went into the house. You know, got a really strange feeling like that might be what I've been seeing the footprints around the house. Uh, yeah, it really makes you wonder too if the neighbors knew something was going on. Obviously, she's well, yelling that, at about her dogs. You, I mean, you, you, you know, you know what's funny about that is the neighbors had. I always used to wonder why they they had they didn't have curtains on their window. They had. Uh, you know, uh, tent on their windows. It was that mirror tent on their windows. Oh, like tin foil. Uh, they put up tin it foil. Was, yeah, yeah. That, that it wasn't tin foil, but it was that tent that you can see through. That looks like foil. Yeah, and so I don't. I, I imagine they probably had to see something if they. I, I I know that they did that because the guy next door worked some type of construction and he had his truck out there. So I guess he wanted to keep an eye on it. So if they were ever in that room, which would their place mirrored our side, basically that would have either been a guest room or a TV room or whatever they wanted it to be. I never really went over there to visit them ever, but um, I'm pretty sure they might've seen something. Now the people, that lived on the left side of me, which was a guy named Charlie, and I believe his wife was Diane, and they had two kids. I believe that they saw something because they never said nothing to me, but they moved, and I never knew why they moved because they liked the school system there, and we, that I got along with their kids, and and they ended up moving, you know, uh, further out. Into, on the Missouri side, you know? Yeah, it's it'd be nice to go back in time and ask. You know, somebody else must have seen it, especially if they were tromping around the snow, leaving prints everywhere. You know somebody had, had to have seen them. And I don't think that race really plays. I mean, I don't know. I, I wouldn't think it. You know, I've talked to a lot of African Americans and been growled at and bum-rushed as much as you right. know why so i think i think sasquatch is an equal opportunist when it comes to i don't think they care but it is a fascinating when you said that and we hung up i thought you know what maybe you know that is a it's kind of a touchy subject but you know maybe there's something to that i don't know um, the reason i the reason i say it is because i believe that maybe they were curious like maybe he they might be something like he's looking at me like maybe he might be something like me or something kind of you know the the one that you right. saw did it have black skin that when you, the one that it, it was it was uh kind of light 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 pigmentation the one that I seen, saw in the window I don't know if I was looking at the female in the window cuz I never saw I never had a chance to see anything that displayed any uh gender to me yeah, and it's it's fascinating to me, you know, a lot of times in situations like this, you know, because I, I do talk to a lot of people off the air, there's been so many times where um, I'll talk to, like, kids, for instance, and I'll ask mm-hmm. them how long it's been going on, and then I'll go back and ask the parents, well, how long has he been saying, he or she's been saying, she's, he, you know, they're seeing this thing at the window, and the parents will say, well, you know, six months, I just thought it was an overactive imagination, and then when they start realizing something's going on here, the parents eventually see it. But it seems like the creatures really have some weird interest with kids, and I don't think it's a good one, uh, personally. I don't think it's a I don't think it's a good one either because I think that they are probably trying to coax these kids out to make a nice little meal out of them. Yeah, you're right, Sean. You're probably right. I want to ask you, uh, what do you think that these things are, Sean? Uh, what's your honest opinion? Um, looking at the face as close as I was, I mean, the, the length from my face to its face was, I would say no more than two and a half feet, maybe closer. Um, what I believe they might be is I believe they might be, uh, uh, Gigantopithecus or, or some type of, uh, spin off of early man or something but i you know the 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 hair that i saw on it i didn't see really a lot of hair on the face the uh it had like maybe some hair on the sides a little bit like kind of like a beard would be um 
but the majority of the face was uncovered. I believe that they might be like like relatives of those two things that I just stated. Yeah, you could be right. Um, did your mom, I, I want to ask you too, uh, did your mom, um, st- how long did she stay there after you left? Um, I want to say she might have been there for another year. I've asked her, did she ever see anything? She claims that she never saw anything. And I wonder, I always wondered, like, after I left and went to Denver, did did she see anything? And is she possibly telling me that to, to because she doesn't want to admit that she's seen it? I don't know. But I did ask her uh, last night if she would be willing to get on, on, on the uh, interview, and she chuckled at me. So that kind of lets me know that I think that she really still does not believe me. Yeah, and I think that hurts the most, especially when family, does, you know, because everyone else is just strangers. But family, you think they would they would listen to what you have to say, but not always. There, there's a lot of situations, like I said, uh, a lot of kids I've talked to where their folks just didn't believe them and just flat out didn't believe them. And then eventually, you know, things get, get ramped up and ramped up and ramped up. And then the parents see it. Maybe the creatures moved on after you left. You know, it's hard, it's hard to say. Well, you know what, 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 uh, what I, I kind of wonder is the way my mind works now after seeing that and experiencing it. I believe that they, you know, and at the house, the old house, um, I believe, you know, there was a railroad, uh, uh, train tracks that went. If I went maybe a little bit more than a football field and a half away from the backyard of the house, there were train tracks there. I believe these things probably jump trains and travel and do different things. And then at one point in time, I believe that they might travel partially through sewer systems. What makes you say that about the sewer systems? It, I mean, just to know that they're that, they're that um, ninja-like and if you're not paying attention, you won't see them. I, I know if I if I was trying to hide from somebody during the daytime, and and I didn't want to, uh, and I was in a suburban type setting, that's probably what I would do is get into the sewer system and kind of be there uh, till night came and came out and forage and do what you do, and then that way you got a, a roof over your head, you know, instead of just making a ground nest. Why not make use of the available uh, uh, resources. It's an interesting theory. I, I mean, I, you hear about them using caves all the time. So, I mean, it's, that's why I was curious on why, what made you say that. Um, but I can see it. You know, I definitely could see it. You hear them around train tracks a lot. I've gotten a lot of reports off the air uh, from engineers and conductors and uh, that have seen them. Or as they're going by, they've actually seen these things walking the tracks and they'll step off the tracks when the train comes. Um, I've had a few reports like that. So you're probably, you know, your theory may not be too far off with that train track that you live next to. Yeah, it was, um, I thought about that. I didn't think about it when I was a kid, but just being older kind of thought about, you know, why not at night if I, if I'm one of them and I'm deep off in the woods somewhere and I want to travel more quickly than me running or walking, why not jump on the back of a train or jump in between cars and you know they're very I believe that they're very uh have a lot of agility so I believe that they would be able to jump on a moving train very easily. Yeah, you you could be right. One other question I want to ask you, you had mentioned the lights at your window. Do you think it was eye shine from one of these things up in a tree or do you think I do I do believe it was eye shine from a one or one or possibly well I didn't see the way that I can describe the, the, what I saw was I saw multiple greenish yellow lights up in the corner of the window. And I didn't, you know, I didn't really think much of it. I thought it was like possibly a reflection or something. And then at one point in time, after I got older, I was like, I wonder if those were orbs that I was seeing or, you know, what it could have been. And so I, I believe that, you know, that they 
were up in the tree looking because after uh, the police came, I believe that I heard like some on the on the roof, like doing stuff on the top of the house. So, yeah, it's fascinating. It makes you wonder what was going on there, and and I would imagine this would affect you throughout your life. Um, having this experience, you know, it's it's a lot for adults to go through. I can't God, I can't imagine being. 12, 13 years old and, and going through this, I would imagine you think about it from time to time. I think about it every time that I'm going somewhere, if I'm traveling somewhere and I have to uh, go through anywhere that's primarily a wooded area, I'm hyper, I'm hyper alert and I've been asked to go on float trips with people and do all kinds of fun outdoor stuff i still love the outdoors but i just don't participate in that that uh frequency anymore i guess you would say and uh so you know i tell the people on the float trips you know i'm not going out there why don't you want to come i told one person what i saw and they laughed at me so you know after that i probably didn't say too much anymore to any other people but um yes uh it, it it'll make you uh it's giving me PTSD I believe I mean I I can go back like maybe about 2 weeks ago I had a very vivid dream where I was out somewhere it was kind of wooded but I was inside of a, a a house and I stepped off the porch and as soon as I stepped off the porch just I could hear like a step and then I was being taken you know that's how it's affecting me. I, I remember the, the dreams that I had after it, you know, shortly, maybe days or after it, uh, tearing up a house, trying to get into the house to get me. Yeah, it always comes out one way or another. Well, I, I think anyone that went through what you went through would have a little PTSD. And it's like I say, Sean, it, it's all fun and games until you run into one. And then all, I mean, you can go listen to all the podcasts you want. You can go watch all the TV shows you want. You can listen to people tell you their experiences. You can go out, maybe even hear a few howls out in the out in the woods. But until you see one, <laughs> you have no idea. And it does scare the crap out of you when you when you see them. I mean, I can't imagine that thing looking up at you and giving you that stink eye. You know, a lot of times people describe that as. Uh, well, I've had a lot of hunters and everyone else that's run into them. That same expression you were talking about where the nose is kind of scrunched and almost like it's going to scream at you, but it doesn't. And right. that's what a lot of people say. So I would imagine it, it would have effect on you. You know, it's if it didn't, I would I would say you're not human. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I think that the whole cover up thing with the government is 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 crazy because. These things are out there, and if they if they really want you, there's nothing that you can possibly do about it. I mean, you could probably try to shoot them. I don't know what caliber it would take to take it down. I'm not an expert hunter or anything, but if they want you, it's, it reminds me of one of those old Tom and Jerry cartoons where the uh, fleas are singing food around the corner. They're going to get you and take you and cart you away. And I don't know if they just eat specific parts of things or whatever, but and leave it for the rest of the animals or, you know, there wouldn't be too much that you can do about it. I just want, I just wonder, you know, I understand part of probably why the government might cover it up is because it could affect the forestry industry and some other things. But where I was, you know, all that stuff wasn't even going on. We we're talking about suburbs, but on the edge of the suburbs, I mean, there might have been one housing development that was further out. But after that, there was nothing but woods. And in between the, the housing development that, that I was speaking about and where I lived, there were houses, but there was also a lot of woods around there. I used to ride my bike uh, down the street, and I would make a right and kind of follow a curve around to the left and go straight for maybe half a mile. And I would be in a big giant field, and you would ride down this hill, and there would be people out there riding dirt bikes, jumping, you know, 
jumping stuff and yeah. Yeah, they're definitely out there. They're definitely out there. But I appreciate it, Sean. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show and, and share it. I, I really enjoyed hearing your experience. I enjoyed sharing it, and I appreciate you having me on. And it's uh, it's been a way for me to vent and kind of take some of my power back, I guess you would say. Yeah, it's a good thing to talk about it. You know, it's good for the soul. Very, very good indeed. Thanks, Sean. Welcome, uh, Jeff, to the show. Jeff, thanks for coming on. Thank you so much for having me, Wes. It's an honor. Yeah, no, the honor's mine. And I know you had um, three particular encounters you want to talk about tonight. Would you kind of start from the beginning, kind of walk us into the first one? Uh, what were you guys doing? And, and just kind of walk us into what happened. Absolutely. Well, I just wanted to say, first off, I, I love your show. I love the whole style of it. Um, people feel very comfortable uh, talking to you. And that was one of the reasons I reached out to you as well. Um, I think you got a good thing going and obviously a lot of people are, are having a lot of experiences and they're very comfortable going forward and speaking out with you on your show. So thank you for that. Um, so for me, you know, I, I live here in the Pacific Northwest. I, I'm out in the forests and the mountains quite a bit, I'm very active. And, um, I've had several, just weird experiences and so i've kind of boiled them down to the three that i'm about to mention um tonight so the first one basically happens right on the shoulder of mount hood and we were up on the north side of mount hood and my <clears throat> good friend and i were leading a group that goes around the whole mountain so it's about 40 miles around the whole mountain and we decided to break the trip up into two chunks with camping in between so the first leg of the of the uh, the trek was about a 13 mile leg from the Timberline Lodge, uh, going <clears throat> going counterclockwise uh, to the Cloud Cap Campground, which is about 13 miles away. And so the thing about the Cloud Cap Campground, normally you can drive up there in the summertime, and uh, this particular year, the road was closed off due to, I actually can't remember why it was closed. I think some trees fell across the road or something. So, uh, so normally, um, you know, it has a fair amount of people that are camping up there. It's a little higher up on the mountain. It's a beautiful spot. But this year, it was empty because of the road closure. So uh, my good friend, he decided that he and a couple helpers were going to go ahead and gather everybody's sleeping bags and tents and everything. And they were going to hike, spend the whole day hiking everything up to this campground so that the campsite was waiting for us when we came around the mountain. So he, they got there a day or two early. They, they did all that. They hiked up, you know, miles up and with a lot of elevation gain um, to get up there and they got up and they had the whole place to themselves. And so it was a beautiful night. And <clears throat> I think the three of them were kind of spread out around the campsite. And, you know, my close friend, um, was lying there just without a tent. It was a beautiful warm night, just looking up at the stars at probably about three o'clock in the morning. And he just heard huge footsteps walking through the brush, like, to you know biped and i mean they were big steps they were not like it he even said that it didn't sound like a person um and i i, I asked him many times you sure it wasn't like a bear or anything and you know he, like i said he and i have had encounters with bears we've had encounters with mountain lions elk many animals and he he knew and he said it just walked towards him and he sat up actually at one point and clicked on his headlamp and he realized whatever was walking just stopped behind a big tree about 30 feet from him. And he just shut his light off and kind of laid back down and was paralyzed by fear. And he just knew whatever it was, was standing behind the tree. 
just being very silent and still. And, you know, I mean, he just went from laying there looking up at the stars to hearing something coming across the, you know, the brush and then just stopping behind a tree and being completely silent. And he just said he was just so paralyzed by fear. He thought he was going to be, you know, he thought he was going to die that night. And when I got, when I got around the mountain with the crew the next morning, next afternoon, he, you know, as soon as I got there, he pulled me aside and was like, Oh, I got to tell you this crazy story that happened to me last night. And, you know, he told me and I could see it in his face and I could hear it in his voice that he, he experienced something out of the ordinary. And so that was all that happened. He said he just fell back asleep uh, eventually. And that was that. That was kind of the first experience that I was a little bit close to here up in up in the Northwest. Yeah, it's fascinating. And so did that kind of, at this point, did you believe Jeff in, in Sasquatch or? Whoa? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I had. I had just from, you know, I mean, if you're an open-minded person and you do a fair amount of research online um, or even just listening to your station, I mean, the amount of similarities of people experiencing all over the place, the parallels that, I mean, that are out there, it's just, it doesn't, it, would take, it takes a very close-minded person to say that. It, that is there's it can't be i mean there's so much evidence um so yeah i was a believer um and i and i've had other you know instances where i've been out there and i've hear i've heard things and i've um you know i haven't i haven't had any visual contact yet but you know many unexplainable things or friends of mine you know i've had a friend that she she went camping with her son one night and she she came in to work the next day and she you know, she just said, oh, I heard this like rock. Somebody was pounding rock together all night. <laughs> She's just out in the middle of nowhere again, up by Mount Hood. And, and I'm just thinking to myself, you know, that's Sasquatch. <laughs> and yeah, you know, it, of course, it, you don't want to say that to them because then yeah. you come off as a crazy person, right? You know, or, well, you know let, they, let they me, laugh it off. Let me ask you, Jeff, and I, I'm glad you brought this up because it, it comes across, it comes on the show several times. You know, on, on Friday night's show, I had a guy on who, um, they were out uh, having a good time. They were in Stubblefield in Texas, and this mm -hmm. is like 1996, 1997. Uh, he's hanging out there with his buddies, or they're drinking, uh, like like most high school students. You know, they're out there, I don't want to say most high school students, but you know what I mean. I mean, it's oh, not yeah. outrageous to think they're out there drinking. Right. Um, but they're out there drinking, and um, these rocks start coming in being thrown at everyone around the campfire uh, rocks and yeah. you know in in my mind you know even if i was a kid i would think there's something wrong here i mean is yeah. someone out in the woods really throwing rocks at us or what the hell's going on yeah. here and i mean big rocks like knocking yeah. out windshields and softball sized rocks and uh you know his mindset was well it it you know, we decided with some crazy people out there throwing rocks at us, and <laughs> yeah. I'm like, does that does that add up to anyone in the room? Like, no. does that make sense to anyone in the room? Like, if I came across a bunch of guys sitting around a campfire, the last thing I do is throw rocks at them because they'd probably right. start shooting at me. Right, exactly. And, and that's what it's these dangerous. guys did. <laughs> you know, they started shooting. Uh, so it's fascinating. Oh, did they really? Yeah. No. They. They. Yeah. They start shooting. They. They pulled out their guns and start shooting. Oh yeah, I don't blame them. Uh, um, I mean. And it just makes you stop. And, and even then, you stop and go, well, if you thought it was people, why did you start shooting? I mean, someone's throwing a rock at you, and you're going to execute them. But I understand well, the mindset, you know, when you're out maybe there. Maybe they're shooting up in the air or something. And, you know, they were also a little, you know, they're maybe drinking a little bit yeah, too much or be. something, too. But if you just take – you brought up a good point, too. If you just take the, the actual – notion of just rock throwing alone there's so many reports of people getting hit by rocks yeah all over lot. the place texas you know virginia you know washington all over the globe you know yeah. it, it's a common behavior just as is uh tree peaking or uh you know shaking trees or you know throwing logs whatever it is it's there's just these parallels in all these different stories that you know, it's either the greatest hoax in the history of, you know, the world, or there's something out there that has this common behavior, right? Yeah, it makes the most sense. I mean, um, it's funny when I look at the evidence now, maybe it's because this is a soup I swim in. 
Um, yeah. But, you know, when I look at the evidence, I, I, I'm kind of lost to some people when they say, well, that couldn't be possible. It's like, well, how much have you looked into this? There, there's a lot of reports of these things, a lot. And there's a lot of evidence that they do exist. I guess it's frustrating for me. I wish more people would just take the time to look at it as opposed to, I had this conversation with someone, I don't remember, maybe it was with you, uh, Jeff, but I was talking about how 40 years ago, if you said, if you talked about aliens, everyone said, here's your tinfoil right. hat. Everyone right. thought you were crazy. Um, nowadays, if you ask someone if, if they think aliens are real, most people will say, yeah, they're, they're probably real. Um, Absolutely. And so it's I, kind of a mindset change, you know what I mean? It is. And, you know, of course, we have made so many advances, you know, as modern humans and building skyscrapers and iPhones and whatnot. But I think it's very egotistical to think that we're the highest, you know, on the food chain or that we're, you know, we've got everything figured out. I just, there's yeah, a lot of un unexplained things out there. And, you know, for this, where there is so much tangible, you know, experiences and evidence out there, you know, as even with, you know, like UFOs and aliens too, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, you know, <clears throat> evidence. And then you mentioned that to some people and they're just like, Oh, you believe in that stuff? And it's just yeah. like, well, I could turn it around and say, oh, you know, uh, you know, I'm not a religious person, but I could say, oh, you believe in those stories from the Bible or you believe in those stories from the Koran or, you know, whatever it may be. Where's the evidence with that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And there's more evidence that Sasquatch exists as opposed to, uh, you know, the the Red Sea opening up. And yeah, and exactly. so I'm with you. And, and that's kind of a different topic. I don't want to piss yeah, people absolutely. off. I mean, that's more totally. Of a... And I, I'm not offending anything. I mean, I, I, I have a lot of respect for people that, you know, religious or have faith. And, you know, a lot of the principles that work in religion, you know, I, I try to follow as well. It's just I was just kind of making that comparison too. No, no, and, it, know, and it, millions and billions of people will believe in in this, which is blind faith. You're right. But yeah. when you have something that actually has tangible evidence, it's it's know, a good point. Are kind of closed off to that. They, yeah, like it's they a, don't want. It's a really good point, and a lot of the people who are generally closed off are the religious type. Um, but that's a whole different show. That is, that is. A different uh, show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I get where you're coming from though. And, and again, you know, I'm more spiritual than I'm religious, but it's hard to argue what you just said. I mean, I consider myself, uh, a pretty easygoing guy for the most part, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm pretty easygoing and, um, it takes a lot to really piss me off, but yeah. <laughs> it's hard to argue what you just said. You're absolutely right. Um, I want to talk about the second incident cause it was a buddy of yours who was, kind of a staunch non-believer uh yes. tell, tell us about that what what happened and what were you guys doing so this one was a little bit um closer to home for me so once again we were up uh near the mount hood area the mount hood national forest right off the pacific crest trail and pretty f far back um away from any highways or anything like that and we were in a tent and we were actually volunteering for an event which we had to be up very early for so we we which we do every year we just decided to camp uh right where we needed to be for this volunteer event and so we needed to be up by like four o'clock and four forty-five in the morning to get ready and the guy who i was sleeping in the tent with is like you know and i had mentioned stuff in the past with him and you know, you you kind of feel people out, and he he was just this staunch non-believer in any of that stuff, and he was very outspoken and very, uh, I guess, kind of abrasive about it. You know, dropping f bombs and here, you know, and just very just vehemently against the idea that it could be possible, right? Um, so that actually made it more believable that this happened. What I'm about to tell you. So um, I woke up at about 4.30, maybe 4, 4.30 in the morning, and it was just starting to get light out, summertime, some of the longest days of the, years, of the year, and he was wide awake. And you know when you look at somebody and you know that they've been awake for a while or they've not really slept, you can kind of tell, his eyes were wide. And he, yeah. it was just starting to get light out in the tent. He's like, and he said to me, have you been, have you heard this all night? And I said, 
no, what, what? He goes, somebody's been walking around the woods all night. And eventually it sounded like they realized that the tent was here and they walked towards and they pushed over a tree. And, and I was like, no, but my first instinct was that's Sasquatch. And I said that to him and he goes, no, man, that's, it's some, I think it was some effing kids. And I said, well, he said, I looked out multiple times throughout the night, shined his headlamp out, no lights, nothing. He couldn't see anything, but he was, again, he was coming up with every excuse of what it was other than Sasquatch. But we actually went in the morning, saw the tree that got pushed over. I looked for some tracks around, but you know, I couldn't see anything. It was very dry and pine needles and and stuff like that but we did see the tree that came down it wasn't a huge tree but you know it was pretty close to the tent i was close enough it was probably 50 50 to 75 feet from the tent i just find it very difficult to believe that a high school kid or a kid well he said it was one person that he heard so he said it was a high school kid that was probably trying to mess with us I find it hard to believe that there was a high school kid way out in the middle of nowhere walking around without a light at three o'clock in the morning and pushed over a tree yeah, to try to scare tree. us. Yeah. Yeah. It makes no sense. I mean, when you, when you really think about it and a lot of people think that, I mean, I, I've had hunters on that think that, you know, they go into that and I guess it's normal. I, I guess I'm breaking balls here, but I guess it's normal. You would think, well, it must be a person, right? It must be someone out here messing right. with us, but and, on the other side of the coin, that's a good way to get shot. You know, you go in there and start totally. messing with someone's camp. You're walking oh, around yeah. their camp all night, Absolutely. and you decide to push over a tree, even if it's a small tree a human could push over. Right. It's a great right. way to get shot. Yeah, even out here, and yeah, I know you're kind of my neighbor, and yeah, um, it, it's you know this is Walls' idea. We kind of live in a, um, and I'm not conservative or anything, so I hope no one takes offense to this, but kind of a liberal area. And, yes. but having said that, you get out there in those woods, man, and oh, yeah. someone will put a bullet in you. You start, oh, yeah, you get around. outside the urban area. Absolutely. And, uh, absolutely. You're, you're, you're right. But again, going back to this notion of like the rock throwing, right? You, you look at the tree pushing down trees, right? You look down, this is common behavior. These are stories I've heard time and time again on your show and on many other uh, you know, YouTube videos or podcasts, right? You hear about pushing over trees. You hear, you know, I've seen videos of trees coming down, right? Um, it's just common behavior. So it's not out of the ordinary to think like, oh, there's rock throws or there's trees getting pushed down or there's hiding behind trees. These are, these are common behaviors. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit closer to some of these experiences and yeah. So I don't know. It's, uh, that's kind of where I'm, uh, um, it's kind of like this double edged sword. It's like, I go out to the wilderness a lot and I know that there's something else out there, but it's part of my therapy, I guess you could say too. And it's part yeah. of my passion and what I love to do. So it's not like I'm going to just not go out there anymore, but I do realize that I keep putting myself out in these situations and it's, you know, things are happening. And yeah. I, I hear a lot of stories, you know, where people have these experiences where they don't go as well as they've gone for me. And, you know, they see things and it changes them forever. And maybe they get traumatized or maybe they just have bad experiences. And so I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit kind of worried about that sometimes, too. It's always in the back of my mind. And, you know, if I take my family out camping and things like that, um, those are always kind of in the back of my mind. And again, I don't really voice those because again, it's just like, you sound, you sound crazy. You sound like a crazy person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hear you. I hear you. Well, you know, the thing with this subject is, is it, it the thing is, is that let's take your grizzly bear, for example, and I want to get mm -hmm. to your Utah encounter. So forgive me, okay. but, um, no you know, you, let's think of a grizzly bear for for example. Ninety nine percent of the time, you can you know what you're up against. You know how it's going to react. You know right. how you know what to do in a situation if you're attacked. You know, grizzly bear, you're going to play dead. Black bear, you're going to fight for your life. But I mean, you know what you're up mm -hmm. against, and you're probably right. going to run into that mentality if you run into a grizzly bear. With Sasquatch, is so odd. 
um, because very unpredictable, man, because yeah. it's almost, and I'm not saying they're human, but it's almost kind of like dealing with humans. You know, you might, you might run into uh, Jeff. That's a and really he, good point. He's a nice guy. You know, he's uh you know, yourself, you're a nice guy. You, you, you talk nice to everyone and uh, you're an easygoing guy. And then you run into like Wes and all of a sudden he's a monster for no reason. And there's no rhyme or reason behind it. You're just dealing with a completely different entity and that's the part, you know, like it walking around the camp all night, then deciding to push over a tree. Uh, you just yeah. never quite know what you're going to run into with these things. You don't know what type of mood it's in. You don't know. Exactly. If it's... That's a really good point. I mean, we all have bad. I mean, you know, I have days where I'm in a bad mood or, you know, I've had bad times where I've snapped at people. Right. I mean, right. we're human. Right. And that's a that's a really good point to bring up. You know, and, I, and I don't know if it was you, Jeff, or not, that said it to me the other day. Someone said it to me. They said, you know, some days you might run into someone and they cut you off on the free, for, a freeway, for example. And, you know, it's no big deal. You let it go. And then some days someone cuts you off, man, and you're ready to kill them. <laughs> and there's no rhyme or reason for it. You know, if they'd have caught you the day before, you were cool with it. Right. You know, you'd have just gone with the flow. And totally. that's kind of the way Sasquatch is. It's kind of, um, there's no real rule book for, I, I right. think if I ran across one, I, I, I would hope I would, you know, it's kind of arrogance talking, but I, I think I would know what to do now. Um, I say that I'll probably end up pissing my pants like everyone else the second time around. Yeah. But. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, and if they are human like too, I mean, just like every human has their own personality, right? right. I mean, yeah. you have, you know, humans that are very kind and, and you have humans that are scary. You wouldn't want to see in a dark alley. That's for sure. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, yeah. and it's fascinating because you just never quite know what you're going to get. And I cringe when I have people on the show and they're like, Oh, my first encounter is friendly. I go out there with flowers and yeah, I've heard stories like that too. And that worries me. There's still a, there's still a wild animal. I don't care if you're, you know, raise a wolf up or, uh, a bear that it can turn on you sometimes. And very much so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You just never know. You never know what you're going to get with these things. I think most yeah. of the time I, I would tell people to treat it the same way you would a grizzly bear back off of it slowly, don't make any quick movements, and just try and leave the area. And whether it's aggressive or not, it's irrelevant. Just try and leave the area as quickly as you can. Mm -hmm. But, it, you know, it, you just, I don't know how we got off on this tangent, but you're right, <laughs> you, you just never know what creatures you're going to deal with. You know, the guy I had on last Sunday um, had a very different encounter with him than I did. My encounter was very different um, yeah. than his encounter, but you know, does that mean, does that not validate his encounter? No, but I didn't mean to go off on the tangent. Tell us about oh, Utah. Okay. Tell us about the Utah incident. So, yeah. So this, uh, third, uh, experience that I wanted to share, uh, happened out in the Wasatch mountain range of Utah. And I was supporting a friend who was, uh, you know, doing this event where we had to trek up through those mountains in the middle of the night. And we were heading over this mountain pass that was about 11,000 feet. And we were, I don't know, it was, it was dark. So I, I want to say it was about 11 p.m. It was starting to get windy and cold. And we both had our headlamps on. And we were walking up this huge climb. And we're, you know, we're from sea level, basically. So we're out there just kind of getting our butts kicked a little bit at 11,000 feet. And I looked down on the trail, single track. And there's just a pool of blood, like it seemed like a lot. And um, I just thought that's weird, you know. That can't come from a person because they would. <laughs> I don't know. It just seemed like so. Anyway, I I just felt weird looking around. Uh, we both kind of looked around, and he just kept on going. And I looked over to the right, and something caught my eye. And it was about, I'd say. 100 feet off the trail I caught uh, a glimpse of something kind of white ish and I, I ran uh, kind of tentatively walked over and I realized it was a buck uh, a big buck with uh, with the horns and everything with the antlers and it didn't have any like bullet holes that I could see or any um, arrows I don't think it was hunting season it was the it was the night 
And uh, so it's, see, what, time, it, it's, what time of what year was it? Let me see. It was in September, I believe. And the buck is yeah. dead, correct? The buck was dead. Okay. It, but it was a fresh. It was a fresh kill. But it, I, but I didn't see any. I don't see any how it would die. You know, unless it was on the side that it was laying on. So it was just very strange, and the fact that nothing had gotten to it yet. Um, it didn't smell. It just seemed like, and it was the pull of blood. It just didn't. And then I, you know, like I've heard on your show and I've heard many other stories about this feeling of being watched. I felt that a little bit when I was walking away from that. I felt like I was being watched a little bit. And then this totally blew my mind and I didn't share this with anybody. I shared it with my good friend who, from the first story who who had the uh who was laying there looking at the stars and the and the Sasquatch came up and hid behind the tree. I shared this with him. Yeah. Because I confide in him and he he's kinda had that situation and you know, so I told him that I I looked over off the trail a little a little up the trail and I saw a tree structure, you know, all these thin trees kind of placed up in a kind of almost like a TP fashion. And the grass was all trampled down around the base of the tree. It was it was like definitely somebody did this. I don't know if it was a human or not, but it like it didn't. It's it seemed like the classic tree structures that you see when you do a little Sasquatch research online on YouTube. Very similar, and it was definitely somebody put that up there. And it was right near where the deer happened, you know. And I'm just like, I wonder. If it, there was a correlation there, you know, I wonder, I don't know if they use these for, maybe they use them for, these are the alleyways that the deer come through, or as a road map, like this is where the kill is, or, you know, I, yeah, it's I'm, hard just to trying say. To, I'm trying to think of like maybe why, but that, that was that, that was the weird Utah experience. And I, you know, and since looking into it, I've, I've heard many experiences out in Utah and the Wasatch mountain range. And that area seems like a very hot spot as well. Was the uh, was the deer was a neck broke or anything, or was it just laying there? I it didn't appear to me to have a broken neck. Um, you know, and I didn't in the moment. I in the moment I wasn't thinking Sasquatch. It wasn't until after I saw the tree structure, and after I kind of put it all together about how I was feeling kind of weird. You know, hiking up that mountain, and then I saw the tree structure. And then I kind of put it all together after the fact of like, I wonder if we just happened to like run one off or something. It just killed it. Yeah. It's hard to say, especially the <laughs> the feeling of being watched, you know, the, um, uh, my guest on, um, it didn't make, it didn't go on the air, but, uh, Steven was talking about that shot this big buck and he needed help, uh, getting it out of there. And, um, they went out there, found the blood trail. And then all of a sudden the blood trail just, stopped uh there was and he said this thing was bleeding like crazy um and then all of a sudden it just stopped and they and mm -hmm. there was no deer there was no nothing it's like it just got lifted up out of, off the planet and was taken away and you know they're looking at it and they're like man what <laughs> you know so it makes you wonder sometimes when you find stuff like this and you find the tree structure uh the tree right. structures were starting to fascinate me a little bit because there's some of them I found where I, it's hard to rule out a human doing it. Yeah. It's very hard to rule out a human. But there's other ones to where there's just – it doesn't make any sense that a human would have the strength or um, some of the branches you see broke because nothing's ever sawed off. If you ever look right. – That's exactly how it was. That's yeah. how it, and, and this one a human could have built, but I'm just like – again, I'm just like why would somebody go through all this trouble – to weave all these right to weave all these trees together it just didn't it just seems weird i mean if somebody's trying to mess with you maybe i guess but that's always that's always a, a slight chance i guess but yeah no i hear you and and like i said if something doesn't make sense usually that's something you need to investigate a little bit and some of these tree structures i don't know what to think about them and i don't really understand the purpose behind some of them because if you look at them and i don't know if this is what you noticed when you saw it but if you look at a lot of them i don't even know if a sasquatch would fit in half of them 
Um, right. And so what's that's the... kind of what got me thinking about maybe they're not used, you know, solely for, you know, shelter or protection. More of maybe it's some sort of, you know, roadmap to the forest type of thing. Because I do believe that you know these these beings are much more in tune with the wilderness, obviously, than us dull senses, you know, the dull senses that we have as humans, especially the modern day humans. I mean, even people that spend a lot of time out in the wilderness, there's so much going on that we just miss with our dull senses of, of sight, hearing, smell. And, you know, you got a, a being like Sasquatch that has heightened sensory receptors that can see at night that are nocturnal, that can smell, you know, maybe they have some sort of telepathic, I don't know, maybe they can tell each other the way that these trees are, you know, put together that this means something. (laughs) I don't know. I'm just speculating. It's hard to say, you know, it's not, it's not hard to fool a human, even your best hunter. uh, If you set them down, get a few drinks in them, even your best hunter will admit (laughs) that, um, you know, we wouldn't, you do, you would never see anything in the forest unless it moved. If a deer is standing still nine times out of 10, even your best hunter will not see it you know we're we're trained right not trained but i think we're programmed it's on our dna we look for movement we look for things moving in the forest and if something's sitting still nine times out of ten we'll just pass by it we'll just look past it we won't even look at it you know right but and i'm sure i've probably gone past you know sasquatch or mountain lions (laughs) and mountain lions and stuff and not even realized it yeah, you that, you probably have, especially in in the country, you're part of the country you and I live in. You're probably yeah. you probably have passed. Um, I, but, I also, you know, think about the Native Americans who were very much in tune with with nature and the animals, and um, you know, back before I guess the white man came here, and you know, and you you look at all their stories and folklore, and they always kind of warned, like, oh, these are the don't you know don't mess with these people. Don't mess with this tribe, you know, (laughs) the scary man of the mountains or the, you know, whatever they, whatever the stories are, they have always warned, like, stay away. (laughs) Yeah. So that kind of brings me to the next point is like, I, I know a lot of people are going out there and trying to, to find them and, you know, that's their business. Um, but for me personally, I, I don't want to go out looking for them. That's just my own, person that's my own personal opinion on it well let me um, ask you i know you've had limited experience with them what right. do you think what do you think sasquatch is i don't i mean that's the that's the question that you know i've heard it asked a lot on your show and you know i i feel like it's uh some sort of hominid or you know combinate hybrid or combination of human and animal that like i said it has these sensory receptors that are you know almost like sonar like that they can sense things they can sense people coming from far away they can sense cameras maybe i don't know but it it seems like there's some kind of i don't know there's definitely different schools of thought on it i'm not as experienced as some of you guys uh and some of the people on the show so i i don't know if i can really speak to it but i I feel like they're very human-like in some ways but they're also very animal-like in some ways Yeah, Um, no, I tend to agree with you on that. I think there's something different about them. There's there's something something different about them. And the scientists always want to say, well, they're a a descendant of Gigantopithecus, and I don't think it's that cut and dry. I don't think that it is either. And I think the longer you're involved in this topic, I think the more you start to realize there's something else going on here. Something doesn't feel right. Something isn't right about this. A lot of people don't look at it that way, and that you know that's okay. That's true. Exactly. Yeah. Everybody's got their right to have their opinion on things. Absolutely. You can do whatever you want. If you want to go out there and give it apples and try to find it and take pictures of it, that's fine. And just be careful. Like you always say, you know, you warn people like these are just not like a Harry and the Hendersons or something you're, you're messing with out there that the native Americans warned about it. People disappear out there all the time. It's just, there's some scary stories out there. And I, from some, for somebody that goes out to the mountains a lot, out to the deep wilderness a lot, I almost kind of want to just 
go with that intention of like ignorance is bliss and if I'm, <laughs> I'm having these like little experiences here and there where you know i'm not looking for them that's fine but uh, keeping my distance i guess i don't know but yeah i appreciate you you know kind of letting me vent a little bit because i actually yeah, don't brother. think i've ever really talked this much about it <laughs> with somebody <laughs> yeah you know and but you you guys get it and you know the people that listen to your show get it as well and uh you've created a nice kind of forum for that well like i said i appreciate you coming on and and sharing the encounter very much i know we're neighbors man we should go get a beer sometime and uh i'll drag woody out we'll go up to bumping lake and uh see what we can uh <laughs> see what we can find Oh man, I don't know about that. But, uh, <laughs> I'll leave I'd my love, younger brother out of it. He likes to I'd point love, guns at people, so we'll, <laughs> okay. we'll leave him home. But uh, yeah, brother, I I appreciate it, man. We'll have to stay in touch. I'd love to go out if you ever want to go out and absolutely uh, or go get Thank a beer you. or something, man. We're I mean, hell, that, you're right across the river. That sounds great. Thank you so much, and I'm going to continue listening to the to the show and supporting you guys. So thanks for all that you do. Oh, thanks, Jeff. I appreciate you coming on. Absolutely. You have a good night. And that's it for tonight, everyone. Remember, if you've had an encounter, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. If you get a chance, please check out the website, sasquatchchronicles.com. Until next time, everyone. i